All right. Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Mame. I'm doing a lot of talking today, but um, before that, I don't know if Daniel wants to tell us a little bit about GPSF and the pre-med group and fun stuff like that, and then we can get started. Yeah. Um, hello, everyone. Um, okay, and I'm just admitting a, a few more people. Hi, my name is Danielle, and I'm a current um, M2 at Drexel. Um, yeah, and so welcome. Thank you all so much for joining us. Um, hopefully this evening that you're spending with us will be very fruitful. Um, I'm really excited for this presentation that my mid will give you all. Like I looked over it and she did an amazing job. So a lot of tips and jewels <laughs> in, the, in this upcoming presentation. But yeah, essentially um, this is the pre-med committee of Ghana Physicians and Surgeons Foundation. And we actually have the president, the president um, online, Dr. Eno, um, who is also joining this um, session. So we're really grateful that she's here and just um, spending time and really showing that she cares about us young ones, you know, and our goals to one day also be physicians um, as well. So we really just want to like um, strengthen the pre-med group, strengthen the med students group, and just bring more um, young professionals together so that we can help each other out because, you know, it's, it's not easy. It's, <laughs> it's, it's stressful. So we need each other. Um, Dr. Ino, I don't know if you also want to uh, say something. Yes. So Ghana Physicians and Surgeons Foundation of North America is a nonprofit organization um, that brings together not just physicians, actually, but also allied professionals. And so, um, you know, people who are interested in coming together um, to really help to improve healthcare, mainly in Ghana. The organization was originally formed to support the college in Ghana. However, of course, as any community goes, um, you know, we're also here to network with each other and to help to support each other to succeed in North America, which includes USA and Canada. Um, I'm very glad to see such enthusiastic young people like Mommy and Danielle putting on such programs um, that will help bring us all up through the grapevine. Um, and so thank you so much for joining our conference. We have a conference annually in person. We have one this year, April 22nd to the 24th. That's my baby in the background. Um, April 22nd to the 24th, it's in um, VA. Um, by Dallas Airport, the Westin at Dallas. Um, so you guys are welcome to come. It's free for pre-meds and medical students to join the organization. I encourage everybody to go to the website, ghanaphysiciansusa.org and join the organization officially. Um, you can come to the conference, kind of hear the talks, but mainly just meet people and, and network and get some mentors. So thank you all for joining and I hope you have a great program. Awesome, awesome. Um, so, you know, it gets lonely here just looking at names. So feel free to turn on your camera if you want to, but no pressure at all. Um, so before we start, um, my name is Mame. I recently graduated from Johns Hopkins University with um, a bachelor's in neuroscience, which is something I'm really passionate about. Learning and memory was one of the things that I focused on during my undergraduate degree. So I'm really excited to share some of that stuff with you guys today. Um, but if you're comfortable, tell us where you're calling from or you're joining the Zoom from, you can you know, shout it out, you can put it in the chat, uh, whatever makes you comfortable. Um, tell us a little bit about yourself if you want to, but um, either ways is fine with me. Zoom silence is awkward, but um, yeah. And feel free to write in the chat as well, or just to um, unmute. I know if some of you on here, I don't want to call names. <laughs> so just feel comfortable. It's a very safe space. I can go. Sorry, I'm just walking inside right now. But um, my name is Janice. I live in like the Chicago area, kind of a, a suburbs from the Chicago area. Um, I go to the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign, and here I'm majoring in human development and family studies, and then triple minoring in Spanish, chemistry, and then child health and well-being. Yes, girl, get it. <laughs> Thank you so much, Janice. All right. 
if no one else feels comfortable, that's okay. But um, throughout this presentation, please feel free to stop me um, or anything like that. Um, this is really informal. I'm wearing a t-shirt. It's, it's really informal. Okay. So please give me a thumbs up if you can see my screen. Okay, thanks. Okay, um, so I, t I decided to title this presentation Earn Your A's um, because I feel like a lot of us really do put in the hours but don't always get the results. So um, today we're just gonna be talking about what is learning, what is memory and how, how do I earn my A's? And we always hear people tell us to, okay, okay, study smart. And like, what does that mean? People tell you like, oh, work smart, don't work hard. Um, and in my experience, I've come to see that actually studying smart entails three things. Um, the first thing being learning how to manage your time. The second thing being learning how to learn because you know, we don't always do that, right? And the third thing being self-care. Now, self-care is really generic. So we're gonna start off with that, like what that means. And then we're going to um, go on further and talk about specific things. Okay, this is not. Okay, so when I mentioned self-care, I'm really talking about three major things, which are sleep, nutrition, and exercise. So obviously we all know that learning happens in your brain and good brain health is equal to good health. And how do we make good brain health? It really boils down to sleep, nutrition, and exercise. Now, right off the bat, I'm not gonna be talking a lot about nutrition because like the literature out there is very sketchy, but all that you need to know is that when you feed your brain, it's happy and then you're better off learning. Um, and recently in the Journal of Neurology, they found that actually eating foods high in omega-3 has been shown to improve brain structure, which means that it will eventually help you study more. But I guess the big takeaway from nutrition is eat well, don't starve. Um, put a protein bar in your bag when you're going to the library, good stuff. But the biggest thing I wanted us to focus on is sleep. So if my college experience is anything like yours, I spent a lot of nights pulling all nighters before all go um, and then taking the exam and then forgetting everything the day after. Um, and the reason why you tend to forget everything the day after is because like sleep is what actually helps you remember. Who knew that? Um, but it turns out that everything that you read initially goes into your short-term memory. And so what does sleep do? We have three things that actually happen during sleep. And this is why you should sleep. The first thing is memory consolidation. So when you sleep within that eight, seven hours that you sleep, that's when your short-term memory is converted into long-term memory. So if you actually want to remember something, you remember things most well, like when you, things that happened immediately before you sleep. And so studying right before you sleep, things like that, you're most likely going to remember them the next day because that's when your brain actually turns them into long-term memory. And recently in a study of, um, in a study that came out in 2013, they found out that um, people who sleep for shorter times, like three, four hours a day, actually has been linked to cognitive impairments like dementia and things like that. So if you need me to scare you to sleep, like here's your reminder. What actually happens is that during your sleep, that's when um, all the toxins or all the bad things in your brain are actually taking away. And so when you don't sleep, think about it like you have all these trash bags sitting in your brain waiting to be emptied and no one likes a room full of trash. Um, and the next thing that I would like to talk about is physical activity. Now, I know that all of us think about a gym or anything like that, but it can really range from just taking a light walk three times a week to pumping some weights um, every day in the week, whichever one it is. It turns out that all of these things are great for your brain. So why you should get up and move? Um, we all know that exercise produces a lot of dopamine, a lot of endorphins, which makes us happy. Um, it helps us reduce anxiety and stress. Like I know people will talk about getting a high after you exercise. And these really happens with all the neurotransmitters that are like being released as you exercise. And all of these things are great for studying. Um, it has actually been shown that exercising improves the structure of the hippocampus, which is like one of the biggest things um, involved in learning and memory. 
And so if you're exercising, your brain is happy, you're studying well. And exercise has also been shown to be great with uh, multitasking, which all of us pre-meds definitely, definitely spend a lot of time doing. Now, this is why I really want us to spend a lot of time talking about is time management. And I think that this is where a lot of us go wrong. Um, some of us sleep well, some of us, you know, exercise once or twice a week, but we really haven't learned the art of managing our time. And so we'll start off with a little exercise. I have this number here, 168. And I want you guys to put in the chat what you think 168 represents. Um, any guesses can be put in the chat. And you guys should please put something in the chat. <laughs> okay, someone says number of hours in a week. Any other guesses? One hundred and sixty-eight could also be how many hours you should study in a, in the day. I don't know. Um. Oh, nobody else is willing to guess. Okay. Um. Actually, that is right. One hundred and sixty-eight is the number of hours that you have in a week. And so how do, you, how do you use these hours that you have in the week? That's what I want us to talk about. So at the beginning of each semester, the first thing you should do is this. So first, and you have your semester, the big things, you should plan. Um, so you start the semester, for most of us, the semester just started. And so this is what you should be doing, filling your calendar with your exam dates, your due dates, your deadlines, all the things. Big calendar, the whole semester, you see everything that's going on. And then we look at the weekly plan. And so on the weekly sessions too, we should be looking at what assignments do I have due this week? We should be looking at what group projects I do, what readings, what do I want to do? When do I, when is my birthday? When am I going to take that break, et cetera, et cetera. And then on the daily side, we're reviewing practice review. Now review practice review is something that I want us to remember because that's something we're going to be talking about a lot. So at the beginning of the semester, you're preparing. Um, and, and before you start each week, you're planning your week out to see what assignments I have, what group projects I have. And on the daily, you are prioritizing. So of course, you have everything that you're going to be doing in the week. But when once the day comes, you're like, oh, it's more important. I look at that math homework before I read, I don't know, whatever it's due like in two weeks. So this is an example of what your semester should look like. So here is what my, I'm um, sorry about that. So here is what my, one of my fall semesters looks like. And so at the first day of class, I was gonna put everything that I had to do. This is the last day. This is all the days that I have exams and quizzes. And you should do something like this at the beginning of every semester. So you have everything written out. You're like, I know when everything is. This is when this paper is due. This will help you know like, oh my God, this particular week is gonna be so stressful. I have two exams in that week and this is how I'm gonna plan so and so. Also, if you have any questions, please do feel free to put them in the chat. So I think a lot of us remember high school and high school was easy because someone planned your time for you. So someone was planning when you had first period, someone was having planning when you had a break, et cetera, et cetera. Someone planned how you have a lunch. And then when you come home, you don't really have much to do. You just do your homework and go to bed. Now college is a little different because now you have to do the planning for yourself. And that's where effective time management comes in. How are you using your 20 minutes, your 50 minutes, your 10 minutes in between classes? And that's really, I think, what makes the difference between the person in and A's and the other person putting a lot of hours and not necessarily doing that. So this is what I like to call the study cycle. Now, I have seen, or I think that this works, and I, I, this is how I would recommend for people to study. So here's where you'd like to start your, your, um, your charts. Actually, you want to start from here. And so before every class, ideally, doesn't always happen, but ideally you want to preview, you check the syllabus for what they want you to know, um, skim whatever you're gonna be taught in class, what is expected of you, and then please attend lecture. Now, I know this does not always work for people, but I have found that actually attending lectures is not only gonna help you actually get what you're supposed to get, but you know, what is the professor gonna test on, what's gonna happen, et cetera. And the next thing is to actually review the material of the class immediately after lecture. And so that could be the 10 minutes between your first lecture and the next lecture. Um, just 
flipping through the notes that you took of the class, oh, this one was actually thought. What actually happens is when you sit in the class and you listen and you leave, within like 20 minutes, you're immediately going to forget everything you listen to. And so just reviewing immediately after the class is just like reinforcing your brain. This is something that I did. And then later on in the day, you study. And now this studying is actually like sitting down, intense focus, like 30 minutes for 20 minutes, and then asking yourself, do I understand? Do I need more help? Do I need to go for office hours, et cetera, things like that. So this will be a good time to take a picture of the screen or remind yourself like, am I doing this? Is this working for me? Um, how can I improve on this? Now, what a lot of people tend to do is this, for a lot of us, this is how our study schedules look like up here. So we have four hours before the test and we cram everything that we need to know. But actually what we have seen um, in, in science and what cognitive scientists have shown us is that this doesn't work. Because remember that sleep is how you're going to form these long-term memories. Um, and so actually doing what people call space repetition or space practice is what actually helps you remember stuff. And we're going to be talking about this young man called Ebbinghaus, and that's going to come in handy as you think about this. So instead of studying four hours before a test, which in itself is daunting, like, oh, my God, I have four hours of material to cover, um, actually spreading it over and doing 30 minutes for like a few days, you have three and a half hours, you actually save yourself 30 minutes and it's less daunting. It's like, oh, I only need to study 30 minutes today and I'm all good versus I need to study four hours tonight. So in your this, a lot of people have different ways in which they like to think about that daily task, right? So over here, previously, we talked about how your week should look like, like spacing out how you're going to be studying. So if that's like 30 minutes for every subject every night versus the four hours. Now on the daily, like how do I, how do I even choose what to study? So for me, um, actually going, going on a calendar and putting, I'm going to do this, this, this for 30 minutes, 45 minutes doesn't work for me because I turn to not budgets appropriately. And so I have this thing called my 135 list. And so my 135 list is really, this is all the things that I want to accomplish today. It's simple and it's achievable. So today I will accomplish one big thing. So for me, um, my last semester in school, I had a really hard class. It was called nervous systems. and I never really liked studying it. So that would always be my one big thing. I must finish lecture seven of, um, nervous systems and my three medium things will probably be like oh finish my cognitive science homework um make sure I show up to work on time and um maybe I don't know do laundry and then five small things are things that don't necessarily need to happen now remember with your one three five list what you're actually doing is prioritizing and so it's okay if you don't finish the five small things maybe you finish two out of them but what you should really know is that at the end of the day the one big thing that I put on there I must accomplish it um I really recommend this for anyone I, I think it's really great um take a picture of it make create your own decorate it make it happy make it fancy um but really just it helps you to prioritize what needs to get done today because you're you're not going to do the most important thing you're going to do what makes you feel better so I guess at the end of this, what, what have we learned about like time management and everything? So going to class, we, we talked about going to class and how that's necessary and all that. But when you get to class, don't rely on your memory. Um, so we're going to be talking about the forgetting curve, but you really like your memory is not that good. You're going to forget a lot of things. So write them down. And with things like my 135 list, make goals and make them achievable. Some of the times the reasons why we don't actually follow through with our goals is that they're really over ambitious and get somebody to keep you accountable so throughout college I always have an accountability partner and we would have like an excel sheet where we would all just put like the things that we want to do and then we'll check it off if we did that um, and keep your to-do list simple um, again one three five list I think works really great um, and use your phone for good um, and so that could be I don't know how many of you have heard about the Pomodoro method, but that's like literally studying and taking breaks in between. And so for instance, the most popular one is the 25-5. So you study for 25 minutes like intensely and you give yourself a five minutes break. And there are a lot of like good apps that you can use. Um, they have like the Pomodoro apps. They also have like, um, there's this app called Forest, which is really great, helps you plant trees around the world. All these things are great tools to help you like study while, while it's not feeling necessarily trapped. 
prompt. And here I have a couple of um, time management tips as well. Set goals correctly. And so one of the best ways that I have found to set goals is called SMART goals. And SMART is an acronym that stands for S being specific. So sometimes we set very generic goals, like I must do well in my math test. <laughs> That's just way too generic, and I don't know how you're going to do it. So it must be very specific. Like, I want an A on my math test. And then it must be measurable. So an A is measurable, like a 95 is measurable. It must be attainable and something that you can do. And in our, um, you have the resources, and T is that you actually have enough time. So you give yourself time. So within two weeks, I'm going to study for this exam, and I'm going to get an A. Um, that's something you can look up. I think is really cool um, using SMART um, to set your goals as well. Prioritize wisely. Again, your 135 list will come in in handy here, set a time limit. So um, say like, oh, I'm going to study chemistry every night. That's not a good goal, at least in my opinion. I'm going to study chemistry for 30 minutes every night. Again, it makes us seem achievable. And then you have a time limit to actually stick to. Take breaks in between tasks. And that's why Pomodoro is great. Now you can configure the Pomodoro to whatever you like. Like you can do 50 minutes and 10 minutes off or like two hours and 30 minutes off, whatever way it is. But you need, your brain needs the break. And um, for those of you who love to cram, Here's some bad news. Like after 30 minutes, you don't, after 90 minutes, sorry, you don't retain anything that you're learning. Your, your brain can only hold on for to attention for about 90 minutes. So you should not be sitting down studying one subject for more than 90 minutes. Anytime after 90 minutes, you're literally wasting your time. So take your break, take your breaks in between tasks, go do something else, come back refreshed and ready to study. Um, organize yourself, whichever way that works for you. That could be planning, setting goals, having a planner, drawing things out, and remove all the non-essential tasks. So put them at the small things to do today, and then make sure you, you get your big things done. And always, always plan ahead. Like your semester planning, do them. Do your weekly planning. And at the beginning of every day, prioritize. So the next I'm going to be talking about becoming a memory champion. So now you have like, okay, I can manage my time, but I don't have any study skills. Well, technically you do. We've talked about Pomodoro and a bunch of other things, but how do you actually remember the stuff that you learn? So I told you we're going to be talking about this man called Ebenhaus. So Ebenhaus was a psychologist um, who showed us something called the forgetting kid. And so he like sat down and learned a bunch of words and then he he measured in minutes how much of the words he remembered for up to 31 days. And this is what he found, that when you study something, immediately you remember 100%. But within 20 minutes, you've already forgotten about 40% of what you studied. That's, that's crazy. So like you just like read a text in, 40, in just 20 minutes, you don't remember half of it. Um, in an hour, you don't. And in about 31 days, you almost don't remember anything at all. And so part of becoming a memory champion is actually learning how to beat the forgetting curve. So how do you keep yourself 100% all the time? And that is where space repetition come in. So space repetition is actually a thing that has been studied for a long time and is a way that we can actually beat the forgetting curve. So we know that within an hour, we'll forget 40%. So that means we'll need to study the rest of that 40% again. And we have a lot of great tools. You can actually do this by yourself just by doing flashcards and reviewing them every day. But we have great tools like Anki and Quizlet and other things that will help you on your space repetition um, journey. And so constantly reminding yourself. Now, a lot of us like reading and taking notes. Sadly, like all of these are actually very bad techniques to learn. Learning takes place when we're doing active learning. And active learning is actually forcing your brain to recall what you studied. Now, is it uncomfortable? Yes, it is. But that actually is the only way that you remember. And that's the way that you're going to learn effectively. So when you take your notes and you just reread them and you reread them and you reread them, Yes, you're like remembering more, you're trying to get your brain, but you're actually not remembering anything until you're quizzing yourself. And that's why we do review, practice, review. And so once you review whatever thing you've done, you need to practice. And practicing can be quizzing yourself, using Excel sheets, using Anki, Quizlet, whichever way that has worked for you. But remember that we want to be active learning. 
one of the ways that you can actually do active learning is what we call the Cornell notes. So this was a, a note taking system that was actually de developed in Cornell University, where they saw people would take notes and they would put questions on the side. And so it would look like this. And so you put the questions when you come back to your notes, instead of rereading your notes, you try to answer the questions that you put on the side. And that way is a form of active learning. You're actually quizzing yourself and you're seeing how much you remember, and then you're filling in the gaps. Someone once told me that learning actually happens when you fill in the gaps of what you don't know. So before every exam, this is what you don't know. And you want to make that as small as possible. And the only way you don't know what you don't know is when you quiz yourself. And so this can be a great way to actually test yourself and see how much you know and don't know. Um, the last one I'm going to be talking about is a memory palace. And um, Hopefully this will show, I hope it doesn't stop the screen share. I really don't know how to tell you without showing you. So I'm gonna stop my share and then reshare. Give me a minute. Hey guys, over here. Let me show you why us kids love playing. Okay. The memory palace is a technique to remember facts, numbers, or other things like a shopping list. It has been around since ancient times and is also known as the method of Loki. Memory champion Marwin Wallonius used it to remember, in just 30 minutes, the correct order of 5,040 binary digits. And a complete deck of 52 cards in just 33 seconds. Here is how it works. Close your eyes and imagine some sort of familiar physical space, like your house, school or office and then add a mental image of a thing you want to remember to remember a bunch of things you can use different rooms and visualize how you would walk through that space following the same specific route as you walk through place the things you want to remember at specific locations ideally imagining things in a funny or crazy way also helps to remember once we have placed all items that we want to remember our memory palace is complete. The day we return to our palace and want to remember what's inside it, we have to go back in. We have to concentrate and imagine opening the door and walking our route. Once we pass by the specific location that we use to place our thing, the item will pop back into our minds. Let's try to remember seven ingredients to make some pancakes. One. You open the door and see a full cup of flour next to some shoes. Two, you walk into the bedroom. Inside your bed sleeps a teaspoonful of baking powder. Three, in the living room sits a massive egg watching TV. Four, and on top of the TV is a cup of milk. Five, you go into the kitchen and see six teaspoons dancing around a bottle of vegetable oil. Six. You leave the house and enter the garden, but it's full of sugar canes and in the middle, a teaspoon dressed like a gardener. Seven, you turn around to check the bathroom. The only thing left is half a teaspoon and salt. Now try yourself. Close your eyes and think of a familiar place, such as your home. We will now slowly list seven numbers. As you walk through your space, Place each one in a different location. Let's go. Three. Fourteen. One. Five. Nine. Two, six. Now revisit your palace, then write in the comments below what you can remember. By the way, if you want to memorize pi or something else for a longer time, forget this technique, turn off your screen and start. Nothing beats learning by doing. Okay, so that's how a memory palace works. And I know it sounds crazy, but that's actually how I learned the amino acids. It works. Um, try it. 
So those are some of the skill sets I have for you um, in learning how um, to use things like that. And I think the very last, so that, that, that is it for me, if you have any questions. Um, but before we go, I really wanna talk about planning and effective planning. So this is one of the students that I worked with as a study consultant and her name was Ali. And for Ali, this is how we would create her schedule. So Ali really hated waking up in the morning and she really hated learning stats. And so to get her up out in the morning, every morning from nine to 9.30, she would study stats. And these were her classes. And if you want to see how we actually created this schedule, what we tried to do was she has archeology span um, on Tuesday and Thursday. And so we want to have a time where she will preview and a time where she will review immediately after class. So the whole idea of review, practice, review is how we came up with this schedule. This is actually my fall semester. And yes, I'm crazy. I put my naps and everything else on my schedule, but I told you I didn't like nervous systems at all. And so every morning before I actually had my nervous systems class, I would review um, before I would go to class. And then I would study it here and there um, after classes as well. So, this is how you should think about creating a schedule. And I'm happy to help everyone else create a schedule if you would like um, putting this together, if you want to have some ideas of how to put it together. Um, and I can also give this worksheets out if you'd like um, to put things together for yourself as well. And I hope you guys have learned like a lot of new things today. Um, if you have any questions, now would be the time. You can put them in the chat. You can feel free to mute yourself. Um, and yeah, let's talk about learning and memory. Thank you, Mama. I think a lot of the techniques that you talked about in this session aren't just um, applicable to undergrad. I think they're applicable to med school, residency, and beyond. Honestly, um, time management is something that we all have to constantly um, come back and just like revise and strengthen our techniques. Um, and I was even taking some tips, honestly. <laughs> I was like, 90 minutes, what? So thank you so much. Yes. I have to agree. <laughs> You're welcome. Please, if you have any questions, would you be able to receive a copy of your time management? Yes, yes. Um, actually, I was thinking about um having it. Um, I'll, I'll send it to Danielle, and she can put it in the group chats or something. Um, so if you're not in the group chat, get in the group chat. Um, hello, you're slacking. Um, <laughs> get in the group chat. Um, for sure. We're gonna put all the resources there. I can put like the semester schedule, um, your weekly schedule, and then you can go and play around with it. Uh, and we also wanna open the floor to like um, any questions or suggestions that you guys have at all. Maybe future um, workshops that you all would like to see. Um, please now is the time to let us know because uh, we wanna do like a lot of planning in the upcoming months as well. So like any feedback, any comments, any questions, we're very open to. You have to give a little bit of time for the introverts. <laughs> so. If you also want to share like something new that you learned that you're going to try. Um, okay. How did you incorporate studying for the MCAT? Um, yeah, that's yeah, that was not fun times, but um. So on my schedule, I would like put my whole, everything that I need to study for the week. So um, one thing that I've learned, one thing that I learned as a study consultant was if you spend three hours in class, you have to spend three hours like studying outside of class. And so that's what, that was like my whole rule for my classes. So if I had a three credit class, it means I had to spend three hours studying it for the week. And so I would like spread it out for the week and then every leftover time went for the MCAT. Um, so that's what I did. And honestly, another thing to remember is that like, you don't need to study everything the same. So some things come easier to you. Like I really liked chemistry. So like I'll study chemistry like an hour, but then I didn't like nervous systems at all. So like, you can see that there was a lot of green 
on my schedule. So that's going to take a lot more time. So I'll take some of the time for chemistry for nervous system. So I think that's like the way to go, like just finding that balance in your in your classes, I guess, some things that come easier to you, spend less time on them, even though those are what you would actually enjoy studying, just spend less time and use that time to do other things. And I think really like just like writing them out, like I like I would put the times that I'm supposed to do cards and Anki on there. So I know okay, this this time is blocked out, even if I have homework. Um, so that that was how I like put in the MCAT, but just be like feasible with yourself um, and do like review, practice review. I think that if you are actually studying throughout the semester you realize that you have time um rather than like you have to keep all the plates spinning right so like study for the MCAT throughout the semester and also be studying for your subjects like throughout the semester so you, even if everything just gets like 30 minutes 30 minutes 30 minutes everything will get done um yeah Janice I hope I answered your question and if you feel like any specifics please put them in so that's that that schedule cold turkey um yeah you should <laughs> I think you should I I think that um just like get today just go sit down and draw a weekly schedule and start on Monday and be like okay today's the day I start and then do your one three five list it's like okay this is the one big thing I'm going to do tomorrow these are the three medium things and these are the five small things I'm going to do and give yourself grace if you don't like finish all of it which is cool just make sure you don't finish the small stuff but you finish all the big stuff and the medium stuff and and that's good mom and maybe if um if people leave their email can you just send them the resources yes yes i can do that um so if you want some of the sheets you can just put your email in the chat i write them down and i'll send them to you um resources do you find where the best for content review for the mcat so, okay, I'm very controversial with the MCAT, so other people can feel free to say what that worked for them. I did not content review for the MCAT because I think if you went to undergrad and you did well in school, you know the content. Um, so when I actually studied for the MCAT, I just like practice, practice, practice. So my philosophy is when you want to do well in an exam, you need to know what you don't know. And now doing content review, you're reviewing everything. So you might be reviewing things that you already know and reviewing things that you don't know. But if you actually practice and it's like, oh, I, I'm not good at Redux reactions, but it turns out I actually I'm pretty good at periodic trends. So you don't spend time studying periodic trends because if you study periodic trends for three weeks, the things you don't know is still this much. But if you actually spend your time studying Redux reaction, then you're closing the things that you don't know. So it's getting smaller and smaller and smaller. And that's what we want to do. Um, so I just like went straight and just started doing practice questions. And then based on the practice questions, what I got wrong is what our content review. And I still use UWorld for that. Uh, it was great. And I think any book that you have, I don't think there's any difference between like Kaplan or Princeton Review or all the other books. I think they all work fine. Whichever one you have, Khan Academy is great too. Um, so yeah. Also, I'm, I'm writing down the emails. I will send them to you. Yeah, I echo off UWorld for their practice questions. Um, they're very, very similar to AAMC. And I think uh, starting off with a diagnostic test as well is pretty helpful. I'm, I'm interested to see how many people are pre-med in med school, thinking about med school, like what's everybody's, um, uh, I guess, status, or maybe even um, physician. <laughs> Okay, I can go first. I mean, grad school. Thanks, mom. <laughs> and and if if 
um, if it's more comfortable to talk in the chat, you all can use the chat or un unmute. Either way is perfect. Third, my third year, and I'm a pre-med student. I think a lot of people are thinking about med school or in a gap year or some doctors here. Okay, Janice is applying soon. More grace to you. More grace to you. So if you guys also have like any suggestions for things that you want to see coming up um, in the group, <laughs> um, you can put that in the chat as well. Um, we have a, especially for those of you thinking to apply to medical school soon, we have a series coming up um, about how to apply to medical school and um, things like that. So please check that out. Um, you know, any part of the application cycle. I know that some of you are beginning to prepare. So we'll be doing a lot of workshops and like personal statements, um, writing activity sections, um, things. So feel free to check that out, share them with your friends, help help a friend, um, keep each other accountable, fun stuff. Um, yeah, and I really hope that you guys go out there and earn your A's, you know, put all this new study techniques, um, put them to work. Um, also like I'm in the group chats. Um, so if you wanna, talk about it. I, I love doing study consulting. So we can like talk on a one and see how I can help you um, on your own study journey and things like that. Um, so I think that would be all. I don't really have anything. Daniel, do you have anything else you want to share? <laughs> No, um, Dr. Eno, do you have anything you want to share? No, I do not. Excellent talk. Thank you, mommy. Thank you. Um, so I'll be staying on, like if anyone wants to talk about like making a schedule or if you want like help creating a schedule right now, um, you can stay on. It seems like doctors missed the party, but hi, doctors. Um, Oh, she's called Deborah, my bad. <laughs> um, so yeah, if you guys if any, you, you can feel free to log off at this point. But if you like, oh, I want help creating a schedule or like, this is how my semester is looking like, what do you think I should be doing? Um, I'm happy to do that as well. And uh, we hope to see you guys, like all of you come to the next of our meetings, um, especially those of you applying to medical school and invite your friends, don't be selfish. <laughs>